Hello guys, this is David with BTEC and this is a camera review and guide for the Huawei PSmart 2019. This is a very affordable mid-range phone coming in at just under £200 and for that it's pretty well equipped and is very good looking thanks mainly to this beautiful ceramic like finish and its minimalist design. The camera is a dual system, a 30 megapixel main supported by a 2 megapixel for depth information but it wouldn't be a Huawei smartphone if the camera didn't have AI assistance. The name PSmart does suggest that this phone should be pretty handy in the photography department, you know like a very affordable P20, but there's no lack of branding anywhere on this device. But the essential shooting modes that you find in the P20 Pro are still here. Things like the night mode and the portrait mode still remain, and despite its shortcomings, I haven't been disappointed with the quality of the photos at all. Huawei have been doing these AI cameras for a while now, and over time there has been a clear improvement in their capabilities, and you can see this with the PSmart. The camera has been improved over last year's version. The early AI cameras would be, shall we say, a bit generous with things like saturation and sharpening. But through updates this has improved and what I'm seeing here now doesn't seem to really suffer from those problems. The camera app isn't quite as packed with features as some of the higher end Huawei phones, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Too much shooting modes can sometimes be a bit overwhelming and as a result this camera app is a bit more user friendly. Before we go on, I want to say a special thank you to Direct Mobiles for looking after us here at BTEC. They have an amazing 24 years of award winning customer service and is a great place to look if you're after a good deal on your next handset. Check down in the video description below for a link to their deals or search directmobiles.co.uk. So let's take a closer look at this app. The default shooting mode is photo for your regular everyday shooting. When you're in this mode, you get a few options across the top. You get the normal camera accessories that you get with most Huawei devices, such as the AR code and barcode scanner, and the translator, which should translate any text that the camera sees. There's also the identify and shopping tabs that will search online for whatever's in your viewfinder. Also at the top is the flash toggle, which can be kept on, off, auto, or kept always on for when shooting video. Next to that is the moving pictures switch, turn this on to record a brief moment of video before the shot is taken. And then next to that is the AI switch. If you're finding the AI a little bit too aggressive with its adjustments, then it can be easily turned off here. One thing to note though, is that when the AI is turned on, you'll be shooting pictures at eight megapixels. Turn it off if you want to shoot at 13 megapixels. And then finally at the top is the settings tab, where you can change the photo resolution or turn on the audio controls, which allows you to take a picture by saying certain commands like say cheese. There's also the Ultra Snapshot, which lets you take a picture almost straight away by double tapping the volume button when the screen is off. In the main shooting modes, there's also a portrait mode, which will add the beautifying effects and lighting, but requires a human subject in the frame. I'm not a fan of the beauty modes in general, and this one is pretty awful. The night mode will do a very good job of exposing an extremely dark scene. It's not quite as good as the more expensive Huawei phones, as to be expected, and the lack of stabilization doesn't help but the AI does a good enough job to stabilize the four second night mode shot. But I find you do have to be a little bit more careful when taking the shot to avoid blur. Video is shot at up to 1080p, 60 frames per second. However, there's no form of stabilization, regardless of what resolution you choose to shoot in. It's a bit of a shame because without any stabilization, most of your videos are going to be pretty much unwatchable. It would be great if they squeezed in some form of stabilization, even if it was just at 720p. Under the More tab, you'll find the Pro Mode, which gives you control over the metering, ISO, shutter speed, focus control, and white balance. It has a maximum ISO setting of 1600, and the shutter speed goes from 1 4,000th of a second, right up to eight seconds. You will get better shots using the Pro Mode, if you know what you're doing, especially in tricky lighting conditions. Check out my guide to Pro Mode, which is on the channel now. Also under the More tab, you have Panorama, which will stitch a series of images together to give you a panoramic view. There's also the AR lens, which I guess can be a laugh sometimes. This one seems to have a few more stickers and animations than from last year's models, so at least they've changed that up a bit. I'm happy to say that the brilliant light painting mode is back, which makes it really simple to create stunning shots by keeping the shutter open and allowing light to stream across the screen. You get four different modes, traffic trails, light graffiti, water, and star trails. The HDR is under the More tab, and I find it a little bit inconvenient when they do that. I like to have easy access to the HDR, or automatically have it applied. 
Time lapse takes a shot every few seconds and then it animates them together to give you a 720p video file. And filter gives you some basic filters that can be used for photos and for video. And finally, there's the stickers, which gives you a variety of stickers that's pretty standard in most Huawei smartphones. There's nothing new here. Okay, so it's no P20 Pro, but I do have to keep reminding myself that this handset only costs 200 pounds. The camera isn't amazing, but it does have a night mode and the light painting mode, which I love. Video is quite disappointing though, but the whole camera experience is great. There's no waiting for pictures to process or for the app to load. I was hoping that the camera was gonna be this phone's strong point, but it's not really. But that doesn't mean to say it's a bad phone. I actually really do enjoy using it. If you're expecting the P Smart to be some kind of baby P20 Pro, then don't, because it's not. But if photography is not your main motivation for buying your phone, then this one's definitely worth a look. My full review will be out on BTEC very soon, so make sure you hit the subscribe button, double tap that notification bell, and smash the like button for me. As usual, all my sample shots will be available for download on my new channel, BTEC Samples, so head over there and check it out. My name is David, and this is BTEC.